Ah, how are you, my boss? Ah, thank you very much. How are you doing? I'm very well. I'm very well, Polani, man. How's work? Happy New Year. Yeah, hey, Happy New Year to you too, my man. Uh, I am yeah. not back at work yet. It's just football one way. Yeah, I understand. I understand. I understand. Yeah. I understand. I was just oh. following uh, the Glad Africa Championship Games. You know, the, it's it's a league that a uh, lot of people don't pay attention to, but it's very interesting. Yeah. Very, very, very interesting. You know, that's that's the that's the how can I put it? That's the foundation of the of the PSL in in many ways. Mm. You know, and that's where you get a lot of good players. You know, the likes of Tico, they came out from there, and mm. I think uh, it's a it's a, it's a good you know platform you know for people you know to to express yourself you know just unfortunately they don't show the games live most of the games mm -hmm. live you know for people to see the quality of games so i think this year it yeah, actually improved a lot you know the nlb have improved a lot and a lot of good players are there you know a lot of good players i i know that i'm one of the people who are disappointed that the games are not live um yeah. are you disappointed yeah Ah, definitely, you know, definitely, because you know, in, in the state we are now, in terms of uh, the pandemic and every other thing, you know, you you actually want to watch a lot of games, you know, to keep yourself going, because I think soccer, you know, brings happiness. You know, if your team, are, if your team is winning, <laughs> it actually brings happiness. It's when your team is not winning that's where you get sad and other stuff, you know. But I think, you know, I'm very, you know, it's. I think they can work a way around it, you know. They can work a way around it. Apart from, you know, the normal suspect, you think they can, you know, sponsor the sponsor the 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 league, you know. I mean, there's other there's other venues they can use, you know, in other stations they can, you know, take opportunity. Even once you can show one game a week, I think is very important, you know, for people to see and have idea what is happening in the NFB. Like, like there's no DSCV Premiership match today. And yeah. it's on the Great yeah. Africa Championship, so there's no excuse, there's no reason for for either the public broadcaster or SuperSport not to have any games. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know, I mean, but you know, sometimes you you need the people that is in charge to really negotiate, you know, in terms of uh, how they're gonna show the games or what they're gonna, you know, what they're gonna do, but. At the end of the day, you know, people are people in charge. They really they have ideas. You know, we are just you know because we are not watching it now. We just you know feel sad that we're not watching uh, the games in NFD. But I know, I think maybe there's gonna be plans on the way. You know, we never know. You know, like this year's a new year, 2021. We we hope and pray that people we only just give opportunity for the for the players in the glad african championship you know to to showcase yourself for them to be seen in tv i mean it bring a lot of motivation you know and there's a lot of good players there i believe me there's a lot of good players that can play in psl you know and they can even go to overseas it's just the opportunity and where you know their luck you know goes to you know that's why they are there in nfd but there's a lot of good players in the nfd we we need people like you to advocate for the Clare Africa Championship because you are you are uh, an ex professional. I, I'm not sure what you are, I should call you an ex professional, but you are still going to tell us about it because I know that you refuse to retire. <laughs> you don't want to retire. No, 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 no. I, no, no, I don't. I don't refuse. No, 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 no. I'm not playing again. <laughs> Okay, okay. L let me just cut the chase. Let me ask this question, direct, this direct question. Have Mr. Mm. Craig Etavia retired? Uh, retired in terms of playing soccer or retired in terms of not playing soccer? I still play soccer. I, I can still play social football. So I haven't retired yet. I'm still, I still okay, enjoy okay. myself. <laughs> let, me, let, let, let me ask my question again. Have Mr. Craig retired from playing professional football? Yeah, professional approval. Yeah, now, now that's a proper, that's a proper, yeah, uh, question. <laughs> you know what happened? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. I haven't, you know, for a long time, you know. But what happened last season is uh, uh, when I was coaching at uh, uh, MDC side in Highlands Park. And you know, there was a, yeah, there was a situation when Capini got injured, you know, and there was no cover up, you know, so. 
And me, when I was when I normally train with my goalkeepers because uh, I've done my courses, I've uh, gone far in, into my courses and I've gone far into goalkeeping uh, just to be a proper goalkeeper coach and all those stuff, you know. So I've done my badges, you know. Uh, I was with the MD, I was with the MDC side, and Capini got injured, you know. That was last year. So Owen Dagama saw me, you know, training with the training with the younger keepers, and he feel like, you know. With my experience, I can be a cover. So mm -hmm. that's where I, I get signed, you know, for that season, you know, just to be a cover. You know, that season we have Tele and Gomeni, you know, and we have um, uh, Malibu, um, you know. They, yeah, they, 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 they got they, this injuries around, you know, you know. So I was there to be a cover. You know, that's how I get signed by Highlands Park, you know. So, but that was, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to give me, you know. So, but... I still play my social football. I still enjoy myself. You know, I want to. I want to keep fit. You know, so yeah. Professionally, I'm not playing for another team now. I'm just doing my coaching badges now. I'm doing my coaching. Born in Nigeria, 39 years ago. How was life like for you? Life in Nigeria is a is a place you know where the only language everyone knows, yeah, is soccer. You know, soccer really give you that opportunity to to become who you dream to be. You know, uh, mm -hmm. but it's it's a it's a tough environment. When I mean a tough environment, it's there's a lot of people. You know, in Nigeria population about two hundred million, if I'm not mistaken. Now, you know, so there's a lot of people, and you know, you only you only dream to give your parents or your family a better life, and you know, mm -hmm. for you to do that, uh, growing up that time, we, we were watching a lot of soccer in terms of the, the Olympics, you know, in terms of the Nations Cup. So the likes of the, the Celestine Babayaro, Emmanuel Babayaro, the JJ Okocha, the Kanu Wanko, and the, the big, the big, the big uh, the opportunity that everyone embraced is when Nigeria won that Atlanta, you know. So, and a lot of people in Nigeria, they want to go to school, which, I mean, is the primary and every other parent wants his kid to, to be educated. So, but, you know, through soccer, you know, you, you, you try to, you try to offer them, you know, and see if you can, you know, you can really, you can really do something for your family, but never forget, you still need to be educated. You still need to go to school. You still need to have those badges or those educate, uh, education uh, uh, papers you need to have because at the end of the day, no one can take that from you. It's only it's always gonna stick with you. But you know, soccer was a was I can't say easier way, but it was opportunity because a lot of people back home they were gifted naturally in terms mm -hmm. of playing soccer. So it was was it was the easier way. For you to take your family out of poverty, you know, for you to, you know, to make your community happy, for you to do a lot of things, you know. So, and a lot of people ahead of us have done very well, you know. They went to overseas, you know. They're playing in the Belgian league, the English league, that's the EPL in England, you know. They go, they went to French league, you know, and all over the whole world, there's a lot of Nigerian, very good Nigerian players that play in there, and you know. So you, as a local, as a local boy, you know, growing up. You inspire to be like them because whenever they come back home, they they always you know bring that gesture in terms of ah this is a soccer boot for you you know this is a jersey and you you always have that ambition and say that no you want to do that to the next to the next kids or to the next people coming around you you know so I feel you know growing up you know was a blessing in disguise you know you grow up in a tough environment you know but. I'm so blessed. I'm so grateful. And the other thing again, I was I was in South Africa. You know, when I was playing back home in Nigeria, I was in the 17 uh, national team. I was in the Meridian, the first Meridian Cup. They played mm. in Cape Town. That was that was 99. 99. Mm. I was I was there in, uh, with the Nigerian team. We came. We, we went out in the semifinals. We played the likes of ACN, Montari, and a lot of them. You know, so. It was it was it was it was a great. You know, I mean, football was just all my life, and football is still my life. And I'm just hoping and praying I can go far in terms of after playing and do my coaching. Uh, earlier on, you said um, there are about uh, 200 million uh, Nigerians. I think yeah. um, those those are the Nigerians in Nigeria. We are not counting oh, yeah. about the hundred South Africa. 
Are you excluding? Are you excluding? Are you excluding me now? <laughs> <laughs> and then and then and then you you came to south africa you came to south yeah. africa um first time i saw you uh you were playing for morocco swallows uh yeah. cricket safia number 34 how did you join swallows yeah it was a funny it was a funny Uh, it's a funny you know situation which i mean you when i explain it to a lot of people i mean people really you know <laughs> they really understand they just laugh you know because when i was back when i was playing back home there i was i started with the club you know from lobby stars it's just amateur mm -hmm. amateur rank you know so from there uh i went to sign you know i was playing for okay i was playing for the under 17 national team So when you're on the national team, a lot of club side they come to scout and get players. So mm -hmm. Lobby Stars, we we are we are camping in Makodi. Makodi in Nigeria is just like the the middle bit, the middle bit of Nigeria. Uh, Lobby Stars was one of the big team, one of the big team there back home. So I was playing for Lobby. Uh, Lobby Stars signed me up, you know. So we are about to go for a tournament in Guinea. That was the under 17. So Lobby Stars signed me off. So we went to Guinea. I came back we came to we came to South Africa to play the Meridian Cup so I went back so I was very young that time so I started playing Champions League you know with Lobby Stars we won the league we we won the league uh, that was we won the league 99 we won the league 99 you know we went to play the Champions League we played the Al Ahly you know during that time there were Abutrikas and all those uh, there those players there in in Al Ahly mm -hmm. so we went out in the quarter final stage in the Champions League Uh, after then 2000 i went to olympics in sydney mm. in sydney i was in olympics in sydney so uh, fortunately you know as god has his way you know uh, we in the same because normally in olympics is a village you know you normally stay in the village mm. yeah, so i think that job Oh uh, no, Mr. Itafia. I don't know whether it's your network or my network. Uh, uh, so like we lost um Greg Greg Itafia while he was still telling us about uh, how he joined E Morocco Swallows. Um remember that Greg Etafa had like 198 appearance for Morocco Swallows. I think uh, he's um he's still uh the most kept Swallows player. Yeah, and um yeah, he was still telling us about uh, about uh, about his journey. Don't forget to post your questions. Um we'll ask who Mr. Etafa Um I don't know whether Greg is ever 55 years old but what I know is that uh he's uh 39 that is uh <laughs> foot, football age. Yeah, if you have any question for the legend Greg Etsafia please uh feel free to to send it through. Um let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see if we have any questions for him here. Uh okay there's no question for for you but while um while we're still waiting for him to to reconnect please um please uh, don't forget to to follow us on Twitter at @propilani don't forget to check all our previous um chats with the uh, football people on uh, on YouTube our channel is propilani and uh, don't forget to follow this page as well Uh, where we normally uh, have our our chats and um and uh, yeah um yeah oh mr itafa is back uh mr itafa is back where did he, where did he enjoy playing mostly will definitely ask that question if he's also willing to work with uh, agents for the junior ranks will ask that question as well mr itafia welcome back 
we can see we can see you we can see you mr itafia can you hear yes sir the network uh can you can you hear us now oh okay oh, okay oh, okay yeah okay um oh it seems like we lost you okay Oh, it seems like we lost Mr. Itafia again, again, and again. Um, yeah, um, Greg is experiencing network issues, and uh, yeah, we've got uh, we've got a lot a lot to learn from him and about him as well. Uh, all these questions, I'm sure he's gonna I'm going to answer them. Uh, which team is he currently working for? Um, last time I checked, uh, he was still at Highlands Park in the ABC Mozambique League, but he's going to answer that question himself. Uh, his best moment in his career, highest goals considered in a match. <laughs> uh, yes, the movement 54, I saw your question uh, noted. Uh, we will definitely ask uh, Mr. Tafia. Uh, thanks for your question again, Tabang. Where did he enjoy playing mostly? Yeah, we'll uh, we'll ask him those questions. I hope that he 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 reconnects. Otherwise, um, since we are all here, don't forget on Thursday, uh, we also have another chat at six uh, p.m. We'll be hosting one of the South African legends, um, Noti Mokwena. On Thursday, he'll be here, and uh, yeah. Don't uh, don't miss this one as well. And uh, let's give uh, Mr. Itafi a few minutes. If he doesn't uh, connect again, unfortunately, we'll have to cut our live short, and uh, we'll have to try and uh, and chat with him uh, some other time or some other day. But uh, we'll wait for him uh, because we are patient people. Ah, uh, easier, easier, easier again. Okay. Easier again. Um, I just wonder if this is how he felt when uh, when he was playing. Ah, uh, Mr. Itaf. I think much better like this. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, uh, can, can you hear us now? It's much. Can you can you hear me? No, I can't. I... Yeah. While while uh, while we're still trying to connect with Mr. Itafia, uh, if if there's any former professional footballer that you want us to have a chat with. Please feel free to DM me his uh, his name. Uh, yeah, DM me his name. Uh, if you know his handle, I will appreciate it as well. We'll uh, we'll get all our former professionals. This is their platform. Uh, this is us football fans asking them uh, questions about their life, their careers. Uh, so unfortunate that our first chat for twenty twenty one is giving us problems. But uh, yeah. Uh, hello, na lady apane. Mm, yep, yes, Sunday. Uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, um, Scapi Malazi, oh, the Davidson legend. Um, if you have his contacts, please feel free to share with me. Uh, let me hear from you, my people. What do we, what do we need to do uh, with the uh, the challenges that you are experiencing with them, Mr. Itafia. Do we suspend the chat and uh, try to connect with him later? Let me hear from you. 
let me hear from you. Pomozo, ah, Naleti, I know, I know that uh, you you want Pomozo to be your to be your mentor or something, but uh, we've we've tried to connect with Pomozo um, since since uh, mid last year. He has not responded to us as yet, but uh, I'm a patient man, and uh, you know, I know that it's not easy to get some of our people, but anyway. Uh, let's try with Mr. Itafia for the last time and see if we can uh, continue. Mr. Mayoyo, interesting one. Let's try with uh, Mr. Itafia for the last time. Yeah, Mr. Itafia. Boss, eh, yeah, boss, man, network. <laughs> Are you winning? No, network is good. I can I am clear this idea, you know. No, as long as, as, long as you hear me, then we can continue. Oh yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Can hear you, now. Oh, now you you were still telling us about how you you joined uh, Morocco Swallows. Yeah, yeah. So as I was saying, you know, um, so we're in the Olympic Village. You know, we about to play. I think we we playing Honduras. You know, our game, our first game. So mm. our South African team, South African team were there too. You know, so I think Gavin was at uh, Black Lopard at that moment. You know, so and. Probably he has that idea to leave, you know, uh, as well as already approaching, you know. So, mm. yeah, by that time, you know, I, I went back after the Olympics, went out in the quarterfinals. The Olympics, the, the Cameroonians won. Uh, the Eto, the Kameni, you know, that time they won that uh, Olympics before Eto, and, uh, before Kameni. And for the benefits of the young ones, when you talk about the Sydney Olympics, uh, in year 2000, that is when we had uh, Benny McCarthy, Siabonga Namvete, Quentin Fortune, Darren Barkley, uh, Emil Baron. That's for South Africa. And uh, yeah. you were at the same tournament with Nigeria, staying in the same mm -hmm. village. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it, was, it was a good tournament because South Africa, that was the time they, they beat, they defeated uh, Brazil for knee. So it was a huge talking point. Yeah, 3 1, sorry, man. 3 1. Uh, it was a huge talking point in the whole uh, Sydney, Australia at that time, you know, and everyone was like, you know, the South African team, we go places, you know. So after then, I went back home, you know, I went back home, I went for trials in Lens, I went mm. for Rising Club in Lens, you know, uh, it didn't materialize. I came back home, I went back to Israel, Maccabi Tel Aviv. Mm. Uh, yeah, so there was, you know, a little bit of an issue in terms of the tournament that I needed to play, you know, some games, you know, because that time in Israel, there you only have two foreigners that can play at that time. Mm -hmm. At that time, there, you know, in Israel, at the same thing, the same thing with South Africa. At that time, I, the time I came to South Africa, so it was a little bit uh, a yeah, difficult situation as a goalkeeper coming from Africa. You know, they feel like you know you need to have a lot of calves. You need to play for the senior national team and all those stuff. You know, so I went back home. I signed for Plateau United. That was two thousand uh, one, two thousand two thousand two thousand one season. You know, mm. yeah. So I played. I played for Plateau United. You know, we I played for two seasons. That was the second season which I supposed to play for Plateau United. That was two thousand and two, because you know the Nigerian League. You know, normally we start not the same time. We start with the the Southern Region because we in the West. Yeah, we play from January to January. Remember those days? We start mm -hmm. you know from January to January. So I was in the middle of the season. Uh, I got a call from Swallows that they would like to take a look at me. Actually, Gavin, you know. They know he saw me. He was following my profile. He, he was so following my my progress and all this uh, other stuff. And they say, no, let me come to uh, Swallows. He's living Black Lopat. He's coming to Swallows, and let's see how it goes from there. So I came in. That was June. That was June. I came in. You know, I came in on on the on the Sundays because during those times there, uh, you have the flight. You have the scheduled flight. So it's Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, you know. So not every day to fly at that time. I was the SAE going to Nigeria. So I came in on Sunday. I trained on Monday. I uh, signed on Tuesday. I need to go back to Nigeria to do my work permit. You know, yeah, at that time, you know, you need to go back to, and, and do your work permit. So it was a good experience for me. I, I, that's how I came to Swallows 2002, June. And Gavin is the one that brought me to Swallows. 
yeah, since that time, that was where I played all my soccer, all my football. There was a lot of opportunity for me to go to go other places, you know. But uh, you know, the, thing, the usual thing in, in football, they you want to go, they say no, you just take two rand on top of that mm-hmm. what you having or what the other team want to offer you, you know. Mm-hmm. So it was like that, you know, throughout my stay at uh, Swallows, and now I really enjoy, it, I appreciate, it, and you know, that's my that's all. That's in short, as well as all my life, it's everything, you know, and I'm so humble and grateful, you know, for the opportunity and everything they gave me. And, you know, it was so, it was so, it was so, it was so great, you know, it was so great. Passed through a lot of coaches, you know, through a lot of coaches, through a lot of good players. And uh, it was, it was, I can't really, you know, I can't really describe, you know, the moment I, you know, the moment I signed for Swallows and the love of experience I have for Swallows. It was so, it was so great. Who, who, who was your best coach at Swallows? Ah, you, you know, there's a lot of good coaches. You know, you can't, you can't take, uh, you can't take uh, their, you know, their shine in terms of what they have done, in terms of what they are, their own right, you know. But for me, uh, if you send me to choose one coach, it's Gavin Hunt. Gavin Hunt, head and shoulder, he, he, he's, he's the best coach I've ever worked with. He's the, Best person, you know, man management, you know, and I think I think he takes all the bosses for me in terms of what he has done for me. And when I was with him playing for Swallows, true with the other coaches too, you know, I would uh, achieve. I really achieve a lot with him, and he's one person that teach me a lot and taught me a lot of things, you know, in life, you know, not only in football, you know, how life life generally, you know. So um, all this and. Any time, any day, always, you know, humble and grateful. Um, I hold him in love, you know, appreciation. I hold him in love, you know, uh, you know, thanks and everything he has done for me. And still yet, I still communicate with him every day, you know. Oh, th- th- that's nice. I'm, I'm not going to ask you what you communicate with him every day. Um, there's a conversation, <laughs> conversation for another day. But, but let, let, me ask, let, let me ask you this question. Uh, yeah. you, you know that you are you are not the first Nigerian to 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 actually be the keeper for Swallows. Do you know who's the other Nigerian? Yeah, that's uh, okay. This Willie, yeah, there's, I said this Willie. There's Peter Saidi there that played for Swallows. Yeah, that's uh, this individual goal that signed but never played. You know, he signed, and you know, like normally, normally, as I say, when I came before I came that time, you know, you need to sign and go back mm-hmm. home and do your work permit. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. with the VC Egbo, he signed and went back home and the better offer came to, for, for, for him and he mm-hmm. let. But Peter Side was, yeah, Peter Side, I really know Peter Side, he played for, uh, for Swallows too, you know. I mean, those are two people I can really remember. Now, um, I, know, I, know, I know that um, this, 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 this following question is, is not popular. You, you are one of uh, the greatest Swallows players in the PSL era. Are you aware of that? Are you aware that there are people who are holding you in such a high regard? Um, <laughs> you are being counted as one of the greatest Swallows players in the PSL era. I'm not aware of that. You know, <laughs> you're just telling me now, but um, I will be very humble and grateful if I'm counted among you know because swallows with the great history with the great great players that passed through swallows uh i just you know i just don't know what to say you know about swallows swallows is just all my life it's everything i've known in south africa is the only team i've played for you know basically you know is the only team i've played for and i'm just so grateful for them but you know as you say you're giving me that you know that mm-hmm. info now i'm I'm so grateful and humble to be among. Greg, you cannot fluke 198 appearances for a club. That shows great uh, consistency and great professionalism from your side. Yeah, I think basically, you know, to correct that, you know, uh, 2012, yeah, mm. I was in the, I was in the, well, the PSA games. Uh, mm. I was. Uh, uh, I can show you that if yeah, PSA games, I was uh, 300 games in the PSA 300 games. 300 games. You know, mm. 
Yeah, so that's that's only PX, the PSA games. I don't know if you can see it. Yes, I can see. I can see that. Oh, 300 games. Yeah, so, you know, that calculation from... Can you see? Yeah. Can you see it properly? Yeah, I can see clearly. Now, now... I, I don't know where you can see. My, I will go back and correct my stats here. Uh, 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 Greg, uh, apologies from my side. Yeah, can you see it, sorry? Can yes, I can, I can. Yeah, I can. Yeah, this is a yes, 300 games. Wow. Wow, I should change you. It's after you go back to your seat. Go back to your seat, Etafia. Oh no. Uh we, we we lost Greg again. Uh he was uh, still showing us that uh, he's got over three hundred caps in the PSL. He achieved that in uh twenty twelve. Let's hope that he is going to reconnect again. We have lost a lot of minutes with uh, Mr. Itafia, uh connecting and reconnecting. Um, yeah, we, we've got uh, less than uh, 25 minutes left now on our live chat. But uh, good evening to all those who are joining us uh, and continue to join the live. Uh, if you have any question for, for Mr. Craig Itafia, please feel free to send them through. Uh, we are enjoying this evening with him, and uh, and uh, we are sharing. Um, he's sharing with us his experiences and uh, his days as a professional football player, and he's going to tell us what he's doing now. Yes, you are back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was trying to show you. Yeah. I was trying to show you the yeah. That, that was 2012 when we played against Orlando Pirates. Uh, we won that game three to Abdustin B. That's mm -hmm. where they present me with uh, 300 PS a game. That was 2012. So actually, I've, I played there uh, more than that. You know, yeah. Before I played up more than that. So that was the PSL, the only PS, the PSA games. You know. So yeah. I'm so grateful, you know, a lot of people, I, apart from you now that knew about it, a lot of people never knew about that, uh, that stats, you know. So, yeah, so but I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful, as I say to you, you know, Swallows was all, everything I have, you know, I played from 2002 to get to 2015-16 season. So that was a very long time, you know. So uh, after then, you know, I'm doing my coaching and all those, yeah, all those other, other journey again. Football never stop. You know, when you stop playing, you still continue the journey in terms of other aspects, in terms of uh, coaching, administrative, any way you want to put yourself to. So I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. Um, th there's, there's another interesting thing, yeah, another interesting fact here, Greg. Um, how many times has Bafana Bafana beaten the Super Eagles of Nigeria? Yeah, Bafana, Bafana, at least, you know, uh, when, you know, you're talking about, you know, like, uh, okay, let me say, you know, when uh, uh, West Brown beat Manchester United, that's how we win. <laughs> <laughs> so if, now, if you play, if you play out of 10, if you, if you play out of 10, you can get one. So that one become a, a big story, you know, but no, on a serious note, on a serious note, <laughs> in, in Ellis Park, you know, when we were playing, we played them, the, I think it was 2-1. Uh, it was 2-1, uh, Benny Maca um, Sean Bartlett and uh, mm -hmm. Villagazi scored in that game, you know. Yeah, that game was, uh, was a... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, I, I was playing, I was playing, I was opportune to play. I was opportune to play that game. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. you know, it was... The, the, the game, you know, the game could have been cancelled, you know, because there was a lot of uh, hinges in terms of travelling from with the guys coming from Europe, and so they all day, you know, it was it wasn't an excuse, but at the end of the day, Bafana was having his, his strong squad. 
Bafana was mm. uh, there was well, they were well deserved, you know, uh, winners on that day. You know, they played very well. I think it was two, Street Buster was the coach, you know, and mm. it was it was it was it was it was a big thing, you know. As I said earlier before, you know, West Brom beating Manchester mm. out of ten times, you know, it's become something else, you know. After taking four by four, you don't forget the four. By, you don't want to put the four by four. Eh? <laughs> Greg, I I I, I, don't, I don't anything else you say, but what I care about is the Bafana register recorded yeah. their first match in the Super Eight rooms, and you yeah. were the goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, you, yeah. Greg, you, 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 you continue to be um to play with one of the best uh players at Swallows. Who, who was in your opinion, who was the best player that you've ever played with the Swallows? All of them. All of them are the best, you know. <laughs> in my own opinion, all of them are the best. You know, from the first day I signed, you know, I mean, I, I passed through a lot of, a lot, I can say, I can say generation, I can say just a lot of talent, a lot of great players. From Mark Bachelor, Mark Bachelor, the very first day I came to Swallows, I remember Mark Bachelor. You know, uh, you know, coming back, coming from Nigeria as a teenager, you know, playing this small-sided game and see this tall, whoosh striker, you know, so intimidating, you know, it was so rest in peace, you know, but it was, you know, it was, it was a great joy for me, you know, talking, talking about the Sabona, Lucas Sabona, talking about the sea to sea, never forget late Dennis Lotta, Gareth Magna, Warren Lewis, you know, you are talking about Eze Kasnayo, Sise Osen, mm -hmm. Japheth Zowani, you're talking mm -hmm. about Peter Peterson, you're talking about Osep, mm -hmm. you're talking about uh, George Homel, you're talking about, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Innocent Chukoya, you know, mm -hmm. you, come, you come to the other generation, you talk about Javala Nimendu, Alfred Piri, Goodman Mazibuku, Lipati Tulupa, you're talking about, uh, I mean, uh, the list go on. Lungisan Lugin, Lila, Mama Niang, you know, uh, Karen Jordan, you know, Sean Pamel. You know, you're talking about Hendrix, the goalkeeper. You're talking about Ron, Robinson, you know, Robinson, mm -hmm. the keeper coach of Thundans now. You're talking about that. I can, the list, I can't really, you know, pick mm -hmm. one player I play with and say is the best. Every one of, of them, they, they contribute one way or the other to my life and I'm so grateful I keep in touch with them. Never forget Dingan Mavalani, you talk about uh, uh, Larato Chavango, you talk about Duku Duku Makanya, you talk about Masheko, you know, um, Nombete, I don't want to talk about Nombete because he's a family friend to me. Nombete, Nombete and uh, Lifa Tutulupa, like we just family, we just a family friends, you know, we, we together, you know, after football, Stay today, stay tomorrow, you know. So, and so I'm so grateful for him now going to coaching. You know, I'm so happy for him. I spoke to him the other day. He was so excited, and you know, and you, you, we, you, you we, must also, you must you must also tell him to answer our DMs because he doesn't answer my DM. No, nah, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to him. You know, I'll speak to him. you know. He's a he's a private he's a private guy. You know, he really don't like to say much. You know. So, but, he, you know, he lives, he lives five minutes away from my house, but he doesn't want to yeah, speak to me. Yeah, no, no, he's not speak to you. He has, he has, he has, he has speak to you. He's gonna speak to you one of these days. Let him set to face. I think you need mm -hmm. to set to face and get into the the reading, and you know, when it yeah. is start doing well, or if he set to well, he's not he's gonna speak to you. But I mean, mm -hmm. as I say, you know, there's a lot of generation I play with, you know, and. A lot of good players, lot of lot of good players, and you know I'm so grateful and humbled to play with them, you know, and most especially I keep in contact with a lot of them, you know. So I mean, and I wish them well, you know, and we it's just it's just great, it's just great, it's just great to be a Swallows player. And then, um, and then, and then um, the unexpected happened. You left Swallows and uh, you went to join Baroka. Yeah, no. What happened? You know, when Swallows went down, you know, there was a lot of uh, a lot of things behind the scene. Like uh, a lot of people don't know about it. In terms of, you know, there was a lot of things. You know, now things are okay because it's back, and uh, we passed through a lot of things. We passed through a lot of. Things. I particular, you know, the people that stay longer at Swallows passed through a lot of things. But people outside that, you know, they're not, they're not involved or they don't uh, day by day with what happened in the in the in the, in the team. 
Uh, mm. They don't know what happened. You know, you know, Swallows going down at that time, 2015, 16 season. It wasn't. It wasn't on the pitch of play. You know, you know, it wasn't on the pitch of play. It was off the pitch. You know, there was a lot of things. You know, behind the scenes that happened. You know, and which you know, I think it's gonna be one day. You know, if I write, if I write my books, if I write my book, are we able to explain? Because I've been, I've been true and true Swallows. You know, in my life, I can say that. You know. For a person to stay in a in a team for over fifteen years, I mean, I think I can I can really write a book about the team. You know, I've passed through a lot of coaches. You know, through a lot of players, through everything. I've seen the up, I've seen the down. So at that moment, it was it wasn't on the pitch. It was off the pitch. A lot of things off the pitch, and I really know and I know what I'm talking about. You know, because there was a lot of things that go behind the scene before even when we get went down because. Gordon, we 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 are fortunate enough. Gordon came, and Gordon was one person that you know, you know how to you know to speak to the players, you know how to motivate the players. So he came and did a magic, you know, in terms of things that were not okay that time. You know, things were not mm -hmm. okay that time. He came and you know he motivated the boys, and he do one or two magic, and we 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 escaped the relegation. Then the following season, the same players wanted to win the league. You know, we went out. By go different with uh, Orlando Pirates. Remember, we're playing in Marisbeck. Pirates is playing. They're playing in Deben against Golden Arrows. We're playing Marisbeck United. We won one eight. Mm -hmm. Pirates won three two. You know. So, yeah, Gordon. Uh, actually, credit must go to get Gordon. And that time we want to win the, win, win the league. Before then, there was a lot of things. You know. And Gordon, you know, he just unfortunately Gordon have to go to Bafana Bafana. And mm -hmm. whoever came, the coach that came in that time, you know, he couldn't handle the situation because the situation, he wasn't on the feet. It was off the feet. And it was mm -hmm. a serious, serious, serious situation. You know, as a players, uh, when the player is happy, when the player is happy, you know, he always going to perform, you know, and he's going to do a lot of things because players, once their family are okay and when the environment is okay, they're going to do a lot of things, you know. So, but... I think that story is going to for another day, you know. So I went into coaching, you know, when I left Swallows, I, I, I just feel like I, I, could, I couldn't play for any team again, you know. I couldn't. I don't want to play because there was opportunity for me to go to meet Gavin Hunt at Super Sports. Yeah, at Super Sport that time. Yeah, you know, it was a Super Sport, I think, that time, you know. So I was the opportunity for me to go meet him, you know, to, you know, to play. There was all, one or two clubs that wanted me. So I just said, no, let me, let me go into coaching. So I start. I did my coaching badges. I started with my D license, went to my C license. You know, do the German goalkeeper coaching, the the Dutch, the Safa one. You know, the CAF one. So after then, I actually before I did some coaching at Swallows about two months because Ian Grow at that time couldn't take it again because the team was too much. You know, the the, the situation was too bad. So I am good man. You are good man. Took over and you know. So we took over the situation. We tried to salvage things, and things were, we couldn't work out. So I went to Cape Town All Stars. I went mm. to Cape Town All Stars. Yeah, become a coach in Cape Town All Stars. You know, thanks to Lunga. Lunga gave me opportunity. Great guy, great person. You know, gave me opportunity. You know, so I started my coaching career there. After I, I left Cape Town All Stars, I came back to Highlands Park. Highlands Park was in the NFD at that time, you know, so I was doing, you know, the development in Highlands Park. And Maccabi, 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 there's a Maccabi that Highlands and that uh, Swallows bought at that moment in the, in the, in the NFD. They were there. That was the, the owner was Allen. So Maccabi I was doing Maccabi, I was doing Highlands Park. So Baroka saw me and, you know, uh, the Croatia, Croatia man, you know, he was so impressed with my work and he took me to Baroka. I spent mm. two seasons there. I was I was with uh, Tobojani, you know, Mac, uh, Mac, uh, uh, McDonald, the one that just uh, got signed with uh, this mm. new club okay. now. Yeah, yeah, he was he was there with me. We, we I was with him and Tobojani. After there, Doc Kumalo, Doctor Kumalo came the the following season. You know, so I was there for two seasons. You know, yeah. So and that was that was actually the longest time I, I let Joe Beck and, you know, go away from mm -hmm. my family, you know. So, yeah, after then, you know, Baroka, Highlands Park called me back because, you know, mm -hmm. they feel like uh, it's my home. You know, Highlands Park, they took me as, uh, as their own. So but they wait, say I must wait. come back. Yeah, yeah. But wait, Greg. It's all good to disturb you. It's like yeah, working with Tobi. Tobi Jani. Yeah. No, he's a great guy, you know. He's a very great guy. 
Yeah, uh, he said, uh, for me, I can work with him any day, any time, because, you know, one thing about him, he's passionate about the game, you know, he's passionate about the game, he wants to learn, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't care if, you, if you're older or you're younger, you know, as far as you know what you're talking about, you know, mm -hmm. he wants to learn, he, and he gives you his input, and he wants you to, you know, give your, your input, you know, and that's, that's, that's a thing other, other, other people don't like, you know, you know, for, mm -hmm. for someone to give an input and, you know, for you to have a good technical team or you have a good team, you need to have people that can, you know, at least give their own opinion. It doesn't matter that, it doesn't mean that their opinion stands in terms of you as a, as a head coach or the, the head of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the team or anywhere, but at least you can have idea and you can you can you can follow from there. He's a great man. I work with him. You know, uh, we so that was the first time uh, Baroka won the Q the Q one. You remember that time we were unbeaten for a very long time. Yeah, we 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 did a lot of things. You know, we did a lot of things. We in top eight. We did a lot of things with the games. Uh, with games, we won a lot of games. The big teams, like okay, when you say the big teams, the Pirates, the Chiefs, the Sundowns, they couldn't beat before, us before. But if before you all died, we almost died because of football. <laughs> yeah, before football, <laughs> yeah, before football can kill you, can kill you, read that, you know. Yeah, yeah so yeah. <laughs> but, but but Craig, yeah. Craig, one 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 yeah. thing I like about you, one thing I like about you also is that you always advocate for for African football. But before yeah. you tell me, you tell us about your passion for Chen, because uh, we are running out of time now. Before you tell us oh, about yeah. your passion for Chen, tell us why Nigerian clubs are struggling in the CAF Champions League. Nigerian club are struggling in the CAF Champions League now because what they're supposed to, to maintain during the time, okay, when I say maintain, the culture that the likes of Ayimba, the likes of Enugu Rangers, the likes of Kanu Pillars. You remember when Nigeria won the Champions League back-to-back -back was the time of mm -hmm. Vicente Yama, Dele Ayimba, Won Neri. Ayimba was top. You know, there was, there was that culture that those of the, the, the two or three teams go to the senior national team. They always mm. have the home base players, you know, about six, seven players, you know, which play in the home base, uh, home base team for the real mm. Super Eagles. I'm not talking about the chance Super Eagles, I'm talking about the real Super Eagles. So after then, oh no, okay, obviously there's going to be a lot of politics. Teams, teams think that, you know, okay, now we don't, we don't need to play Champions League. We need to win the league back home. Some of the players are going overseas because any Nigerian player, the first priority for him after he becomes a star or try to be a star or start playing well back home, the first step, he wants to move to Europe. He doesn't care what, you know, overseas, what, what country, which country is going to go. He just want to go outside country because Nigeria have that mentality that if you play outside the country, you always have, a, you always have the chance to play for the mm -hmm. national team. So they want to move. So the, most of the best players and most of the, you know, talented players, I can say, because, uh, some of, some of them are hardworking players in terms of, you know, the ability, they don't want to stay back home. They want to play back home because, you know, in terms of the environment, in terms of the, the money-wise, you know, and how they treat the people there, you know. So they want to go overseas. They want to go, no matter the country, as far as football is played there, they believe that when they go overseas, they come, they come back, they become more recognized and get opportunity to play for the national team. So they're struggling now because of things that they didn't keep, you know, aligned to. So other countries are now catching up, and which is a good thing. It's an eye-opener. If you can see the under-17 and the under-20 now, the waffle now, it's a little bit difficult for the, the likes of Nigeria, you know, the likes of uh, Ghana, Togo. Okay, Togo have been disqualified because of, you know, the Emirates something. So that's where Nigeria will have opportunity if they can go for the under-17. So... In those stages now, you see those things that back, back then, you know, a lot of West African country or a lot of countries that you think that the giants of Africa, they were sustaining. Now it's no longer there. Now you only give credit to the North Africa, which, I mean, right from then until now, they always maintain that, you know, that uh, power in terms of the Champions League. Mm. Chan, you, you, Chan you are not as Mr. Chan. No, Chan, Chan, you can take away Chan from anyone. Chan is my, my biggest, you know, mm -hmm. I, I cannot put it. I, I think, you know, when we need to advocate in something or we need to fight for something, me, I feel personally on my own side, mm -hmm. I think Chan is the best way to introduce players because not every player will play for Kaiser Chiefs. Not every player will play for Sundance. Not every player will play for Orlando Pirates. 
you have a player playing for, okay, let me say, give example for, for Bluefontein Celtic. You have a player playing for Barroca. You, mm. you, for opportunity for him to, to break into the senior Bafana Bafana team, it will take him time. Not that he cannot break, but they don't, they don't, they don't have that opportunity like the likes of uh, Sundance Pirate players and Kaiser Chiefs players have super sport. So try and give, okay, if you cannot go to the men, the, the men senior national team, the one that you rub shoulder with the likes of Zungu, Pesi Tau, this is Chan for you. You can form your own opportunity. And if you go there and do well, if you go there and do well, it's the same national team. From there now, you can come back and say, you know, after the tournament, you always have people and say, this, this player, this player, they did very well. They do raise their hand. Why can't they go to the, to the, to the main uh, uh, national team? Well, the two of them are national team, which I believe the two of them are the, are the same. But because they are home based, they don't have opportunity to play in the in the in the in the other in the other. I mean, mix the same with the overseas players. So that's the opportunity for them to shine. And with that, you have produced a lot of players. I give example like AGK from Nigeria. AGK came from Rangers International, came to South Africa and played that chance. Sundown signing. He has opportunity to go to Europe. A lot of players, you know. During the home base, you have the uh, Sunday Uba that score, you know, the one that scored the winning goals in AFCON in 2013, the one mm -hmm. Keshi won in South Africa. Yeah, it was a home base player. So mm -hmm. I feel the home base player need opportunity. And for you to give them the opportunity is all a charm. Last five minutes, your best PSL 11. You are the coach, you are uh, David Mokoshua, you are giving me your best PSL. 11. PSL as a whole, or are you talking about Swallows? You can, give, you, you can give me Swallows first, it's fine. But I know that I with can... Swallows, you are, you are going to hide. Just give me the whole no, PSL. The swallows, the swallows, I can put the whole team there, you know. The Swallows, I put the whole team there. I take myself out. <laughs> and the, best, the, best, the best PSL team for me... For me personally, that's for me, you know, yeah, for me personally. It starts mm. in goals. You start in goals. Okay, formation first. What formation are you playing? No, I'm playing 4-3-3. Uh, three, three. That's the best four, formation. Three. Yeah, 4-3-3. Yeah, I'm not in 4-3-3, three, three. right. Goals. Mm. In goals, you know, I, uh, for me, I give to Willy Okpara. Okpara, Okay. Yeah, Willie Okpara, you know, I think he has done so much, you know, for you to be a pirate no, 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 for no, very no, long time. No explanation, Greg. I don't want to explain because I'm going to challenge them. No explanation. No yeah, problem. Four. My back four, you have uh, uh, Katano. Katano. Tembo. Yeah, Tembo. Okay. You have, for me, for me, I put, Os, um, uh, Mar, uh, what's his name, uh, George Homer. Okay. George Romel. George Romel. Left and back. I'm quite well. Huh? Left back. No, no argument. Innocent Chikoya. I need crosses. I need crosses yes. in the boss. Uh, former former yeah. Manning Rangers and Orlando Pirates defender. Yes. Yeah. Swallows. Don't forget to put Swallows there. He was a Swallows. Oh, and, and Swallows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Yeah, my right back. My right back. I uh, go with Peter Peterson. Oh, yes. Uh, Morocco Swallows right back. Peter yeah. Peterson. Yeah. He's number 24. Yeah. Your three men midfield. Ah, uh, that, is, that, is, that is, you know, it's just simple for me. I need the left, mm -hmm. I need the left midfielder, which is Alfred Piri. Ah, Ngubo. I need a, I need a defensive midfielder, which is Goodman mm -hmm. Mazibuku, captain of all captains. He's the ah, captain. Actually, he's my the captain. captain. Mm -hmm. And Tutu Lupa is playing, you know, is playing the number eight position, playing the diamond one. Hey, the, 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 this is a, this is a, this is a tricky one. Now you've, you've got the hard workers in midfield. I don't, I just, I want in the box there. I just want to finish because my strikers, they don't take chances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The yeah, for me, yeah, for me, I played, I played, I played, I want to play three strikers, you know, three strikers uh -huh. because... Uh, I need goals, you know, I need goals, mm -hmm. so they, they need to interchange. First, first you have Collis in Besuma. Okay, Zambian assassin. You have, uh, uh, what's his name, Dennis Lotta. Chisampama. 
Chinsa Palmer, yeah. And of course, you know, you cannot play without uh, getting crosses in the box. Mm. Uh, yeah, Sise Osen. Sise Osen for me ah. is one of the best players I've ever come across. And Celtic can swallow Lech and Cecil Osen. Yeah. No, th th this, is a, this is a very strong team, uh, Greg. I cannot challenge it. And I cannot falter you for it. Uh, I, 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 I'm not going to say you will, you, will, you will fight for relegation here, but I'm saying you can challenge for the league with this lineup. Yeah, because my back four, there, my back four is there, very strong there. I don't want to say no, any nonsense at the back there. I want the ball up front, but I know those three strikers. Those three strikers, they, they're definitely going to score. And the midfield is hard-working midfielders. I need a pass from Piri, which he can close, with his eyes closed. He can do that all day. Hmm. Fortunately for me, I, wa uh, I saw all these players play in the PSL. Uh, from uh, Willie Opara, Caetano Tembo, George Hamel, Innocent Chikoya, Pisa Peterson, uh, Goodman Mazibugo, Alfred Piri, Lifatu Tulupa, Dennis Lota, Collins Mbesoma, Cecil Austin. I watched all of them, uh, but none of them uh, will receive my honor today more than you. Mr. Isafia, thank you very much for, for spending this hour with us. Uh, you've been a, a wonderful guest. Uh, as football fans in South Africa, we wanted to tell you how much we appreciate you, how much we, we valued your contribution uh, in the PSL, and how great you were. We wanted to remind you how great you were as well. Thank you for your time thank again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm very humble, man. I'm very humble to speak to you and Thanks for everything. God bless you. Just be with you. Have a good night, Greg. The same to you, Russ. Thanks. Thanks.